Well, welcome back. Prince Charles will set out his stool to save the Commonwealth during a trip to Rwanda, insisting that members are better and stronger together. Got his work cut out, though, with many countries poised to potentially become full republics when the prince becomes king, having maintained their links to the royal family, in some cases, out of respect to the queen. Australia and Jamaica are among those countries earmarked to potentially one day want to cut their ties. So will the Commonwealth crumble when Charles does become the monarch? I'm joined by tonight's Beers Pack, Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker and author Julie Bindle. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. So, Julie, I know you're a massive fan of the royals, <laughs> but you're not, you don't really believe in it, right? You don't, you don't think we should have a monarchy. And so, de facto, the Commonwealth falls, does it? I'm a Republican. Um, I respect that the Queen works extremely hard and she didn't really have much choice in her role, so I'm not rabid. But, no, I think that the Commonwealth should die when she dies. And I think that for many countries, and countries I've visited, Kenya, Uganda and others, mm. for them, it's only really the elite that think that the Commonwealth is worthy of any attention. And whereas other people, especially those that live in poverty and hardship, they think that ties with NATO and the UN are probably far better, would far better serve them than the Commonwealth. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, Esther, I've been in Australia recently where they've had, you know, there's a bit of republicanism in the air, but I definitely got the feeling they're quite a way away from wanting to sever their link. But a lot of it is pegged to the Queen. Tremendous respect for this unique world figure, really. No one's quite sure what's going to happen when she is sadly no longer with us. We're not sure when that will be, obviously. But there is a lot of sort of precariousness around the monarchy and the Commonwealth, all of it. What do you think? I think it's quite a pity that, you know, the Commonwealth has now just become synonymous with the Queen as opposed to the royal family. Um, and, you know, I actually dispute the idea that it's just, you know, amongst the countries that you were mentioning, it's just an elitist idea. Actually, if you think about the Commonwealth and the potential of the Commonwealth, it gives a lot of these countries a lot of visibility. So if you imagine you're a small African country mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere, you know, petitioning the UN to help solve a political mm -hmm. dispute or anything mm -hmm. like that doesn't really get the attention of these larger organisations. But you can have direct access to countries like India, Canada, yes. the UK, and they are actually far more useful in solving these sorts of issues than, you know, big organisations. No, I agree with you. For small countries that normally would ne not get the attention of the UN but or even a seat post -Brexit, at the table. I mean, obviously, we haven't seen the realisation of mm. that yet, but mm. there's so much potential with this organisation post-Brexit to actually yes. just deepen its ties with the Commonwealth. I think one of the issues I have with people that talk down on the Commonwealth is really understanding Britain's place post-Brexit and in the 21st century as it is now. It's not, the, you know, Britain that came out of the Second World War, the British Empire, mm. all of that. Everything has evolved and the royal family will evolve with that, but we also have to understand the Commonwealth's role in that. There's so many opportunities to, to, ex to expand Britain's, you know, touch around the world and the values that Britain ha um, um, holds so dear I mean, that I, I think I it's so feel, sad. I did feel with the Platinum Jubilee, it was a uniquely British occasion. Yeah. And when you travel the world like I've done a lot, you know, there's a lot of people envious of what we have here, this yeah. royal family, this pomp and pageantry. Yeah. You know, people say, what's the point of it? I say, well, actually, that's the point of it. It's something uniquely British. It, it pays for itself through tourism most of the time. I'm what, sure what, that's true, though. Well, it is pretty true. I think it pays some businesses through tourism. I don't think it goes directly to the people, whereas from the people, our, our uh, tax goes directly to the royal family. Didn't you feel a little twinge of patriotic fervour? Well, I, I you saw have, all the flags waving and the I don't royals have an issue. out there. I don't have an issue with patriotism. I think that, you know, we should be proud of the things that we're good at doing and that mm. we should be, be proud of the things that we that we should be proud of. But I don't think we have to see that through the lens of a privileged family that is... It's, it's obscene when you think about the homelessness and people using food banks and you see the vast wealth and privilege of a family that we're supposed to doff our yeah, but caps they to. But they're, but they're yeah, much more than that. Well, they do, the they do an awful just... lot of work for charities up and down the country. They do a huge number of public engagements, things which would bore me rigid. They're doing them every day, all day. Exactly. The, the royal family is a lot more than just a privileged family. I completely agree with you. Yes, they are a privileged family, but they're a lot more than that. And I think a lot more is at stake than just saying, let's get rid of this privileged family, let's get rid well, of the, the, you know, the Commonwealth and all of these things. I feel like... And, you know, it's not just um, countries that were in the British Empire that part of, you mm -hmm. know, the Commonwealth. There's Rwanda, obviously. Moza um, I think it's Mozambique, okay, look, yeah. Of course. The other I've, got I've got to jump in here. Very quick test. Apparently, there's a flamingo test where if you can balance on your leg yeah. for 10 seconds or more, you've got a longer life ahead of you. I'm going to spare I'm, you, Judy, because you've already, said, you've already said you don't <laughs> want to do it. I'm, Esther, absolutely. get up here. Oh, OK. Let's do this, right? Okay. Up you go. On one foot, we've I'm, got 20 I am, seconds. I am in heels. I'm going to go. Esther, go. OK. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I said, you were wobbling. Oh, I am rock solid. Heels. I'm
I'm going to live forever. <laughs> you, Esther Krakow, have got problems. Right. And you, Julie, very sensible. Hold on. That's it. So, my lovely panel, thank you very much.